Yeah, I'm just thrilled with this uh, image. Of course, one of the most famous images in the, in the Catholic world. Uh, this was brought back to us by uh, uh, Father Elmer Romero, a member of our faculty, who went down to Mexico City and got this really exact replica. It's the same size, coloration's very vivid. So this is the image that you have down in Mexico City, which has played such a huge role in the psyches and spirits of, of Latin Americans. And it fits, I think, this space so beautifully. A main reason he, she's here is that she meant so much to John Paul II. I love the fact, by the way, that John Paul's shrine is right over here, and he's looking, as it were, over at the Mother of God, because his motto, you know, was totus tuus. I'm all yours, and the yours in that case was the Blessed Mother. He had a very strong Marian devotion, and especially to Mary in this, um, under this title and this form. John Paul visited Mexico many times as papacy. He had a very strong, uh, visceral connection to the Mexican people and their spirituality. So that's why she's here. He also referred to Our Lady of Guadalupe as the star of the new evangelization. Uh, star, I suppose, in the sense of like the star of a movie, but also the, the beacon, the guiding light of the new evangelization. Keep in mind, you know, for about 10 years after the Spaniards arrived in the New World, uh, there were missionary efforts, but they were, they were not successful. And then this happened, you know, the apparition of the Blessed Mother, the appearance of this image on the tilma or the cape of, of Juan Diego. And then within 10 years, all of Mexico is converted. So she does function truly as an evangelical figure, and that's why John Paul called her the star of the new evangelization. And what I find amazing, you see it all the time, don't you? The power of this image. Keep in mind, too, we have a lot of Polish students. We talked about that, and I hope they're very moved by the shrine to John Paul. We have a lot of um, uh, Hispanic students here, not only from Mexico, but from uh, other parts of Latin America. I hope this for them is a, is a powerful symbol of... Um, of how the Lord has worked, you know, in their uh, home countries. You know, there's so much to say about the symbolism of this image that's been beguiling people now for centuries. Notice how Mary stands on the moon and she blocks out the sun. She's in front of the sun. Well, it's the woman clothed in the sun from the book of Revelation, but also in Aztec religion, the moon and sun were deities. Well, here's this figure who's greater than they. She's standing on the moon and blocking the sun. Yet she's not a goddess because she's got her head bowed and her hands folded in prayer. She's looking to a higher power that occludes these old um, deities. You know who she's looking to? She's looking to the one in whom essence and existence coincide. Thomas Aquinas names the creator God, and Mary gives herself to that great power and in the same process blocks uh, the, the lower gods. And so that's why this was very powerful when the symbolism was taken in by the Aztec people, they understood what this uh, spoke of. Of course, the famous little belt around her waist there symbolizes her pregnancy. So she comes, not pointing to herself, but she comes as the mother of Christ. A little touch here, see how her, her knee comes out there, just underneath her vesture. Well, she's dancing. And of course, dancing was a very powerful religious move for the Aztec people. So she's dancing in the presence of this great power. That's one reason why this image particularly had such a powerful evangelical uh, import.